you're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> Go. Welcome. I am back. Hence the star of the show from my hiatus. Hello, Atis. Yes, uh, I am back. Hiatus. Hi hiatus. It is uh, Norwegian for being gone temporarily, isn't it? I don't know what it means. Either way, this is Jerry, the star of the show, with me. It means gone. Like a sabbatical. Like, yeah. Okay. He was gone for a period. Taking a break. It's like taking a break. I was indisposed. You, sir, are Enrique. I'm glad to have you. I was going to ask, like, who am I? Who am I? That's what everyone should ask. Who are you? Jean Valjean. I'm Gabby. Excellent. Gabby Moraga, host of the board game Snobs, the most regular of hosts, the only one that has been here holding down the fort while Jerry is on his high anus. I don't want to, speaking of anus, reminds me that for some reason you had to dig to the bottom of the barrel and got one Dan Hughes convinced to come on this show. But then I realized you and Dan have already done one defunct podcast together. Yeah. The (laughs) well-rounded somethings, gamers. That's defunct, right? Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. You stopped. <clears throat> uh, no, uh, uh, like, for all of, effectively, yes. What about Why? Luke Pryor? Ah, Luke, former ho- podcast host. <laughs> so y'all just stopped your show about consistent weight loss. Uh, yeah, I to take that up with Dan. Oh, I can't. He's been. He's uh, talking about being stressed out as a nurse. Oh, please. He's been too busy. He's got a medal. Too busy to be healthy, apparently. I guess. Well, thank you, Dan. Ooh. But I've started my weight loss journey. I've continued it. Ugh, I hate when I say journey. I like that. Then Even though I do like the band. Adventure? Favorite journey song. I don't have one, I don't think. Well, there's Don't Stop Believing. Of course, but I have stopped believing. What's the other one they have, though, that they played it on? Uh, I don't even know the name of it. But yeah, apparently it's not, apparently I'm not into them as much as I thought it was, because mm. I only know Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> but Dan came on our show, and I would rate it probably a number three, maybe a four on the Bristol stool scale. Is that what the, is that the chart? The Bristol y'all? stool chart? Correct. Uh, don't ask. That's Enrique. a chart of small stools for your bar, Enrique. Check it out. Look it up on your phone. Bristol stool chart. I feel like I should. Don't. You should. And Mr. Brandon, Brendan Haynes, he was on. I didn't get to listen Brandon to Brandon I didn't get to listen to that episode. I haven't listened yet. I appreciate everybody putting in the work and guest starring on our podcast while I am busy doing much more important things. What else is there? Oh, our Patreon apparently started prematurely. <laughs> oh, you finally got that going? We did a premature Patreon, where for which Bubba sent me the link. I was supposed to do some editing. I am frightened because I haven't even looked at it to see if I edited out the various I tell things. you, I tell you, it's it's quite hilarious to look at. I like how it, whoever did it, so I'm guessing Bubba, I'm guessing Bubba did it, right? I don't even know how to get onto Patreon. I don't even have a Patreon account. Why are you looking? What's the matter? Are you sorry? So what are you doing? Yeah, it's just it's so cold in here. It is not cold. Like, in- no, it, it's not. It's not to the point of where it's like freezing cold. It's like to the point of cold of where I I. Do you have a blanket or a shawl? Oh I know. Like, no, no, don't give me a blanket because Afghan? then then I'll fall asleep. Is it called an? What's the, is that an Afghan? Is that one? Uh, yeah, I don't know why it's called that. Or something you can wrap. I'm trying to look up, but anyway, it was weird. The phrasing was like board game snobs podcast. 
a board game podcast, a, a podcast about board game. Yeah, I don't know. Something was weird about it, and it seemed unedited. Well, it okay. probably was partially unedited. I can't even get to it. I can't operate my phone. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. The only people who care. I'm trying to log on. Will you mind? Hey, stay on topic. We'd like to thank the premature and our very first Patreon ish. Is it what they call him? A Patreon? Patriot. Uh, pa- no, pa- no, pa- Patreon. The person who Patriot. I think it's just a patron for patronizing was it us. Jehesse? <laughs> Jehesse Jones. Jehesse was the first. Jesse, Jesse Jones. And, yes. And so. Followed soon after by Jessica. Korea, then Jared, Don Gilstrap. Are you just going to greet them all? Patience and Patricia. Listen, Brandon, hey, hey, Mike hey, Poole, hey, no, no, Laura no, no, Brown, no, no. Kenny Lucas, Listen. Michael Langford, Albert Shaw, I want to, Don O'Neill. I want to know why in the world you throw fits about me making lists and non-random people's names, and then as soon as That's you get it. done, you're That's fired That's it, because they gave me money to say uh, that. They didn't give you money to say that. They did. I find this very disturbing. Number one. Where we're going to do an episode and like tell people about the Patreon, because I think it's rather odd that people just give us money. They don't know us, but yet they send us money, and for that we must assume that they are good people, and we thank them. And we will, of course, send out our Patreon for which will help pay for the hosting and various other things that we use on this podcast. Thank you very kindly to all those who have, and we also have. We'll have to do something special for our patrons. Here right. it is. Board Game Snobs are creating Board Game Podcast. We are. <laughs> we are creating Board Game Podcast. Singular. We are. Just one. Y- yes. Just this one. This one. Yeah. And Is then... It, uh, that seems correct to me. We only the, have one podcast. The About page was fine. Quite humorous. I, I, I don't know who wrote that. You're welcome. Was that you? That was Bubba, probably. <laughs> A shining example of how mediocrity can slowly develop into the finest podcast that mentions board games. Mm, that's probably Bubba. Bubba. Bubba's very wordy. You know, he writes poetry. Does he? He does. I ride poultry. I got a chicken in the backyard to put a saddle on. So, that that's not even... I'm, I'm trying not to laugh. Uh, it's don't not, even don't, look at me. Don't, don't laugh. Don't, don't look it at sounded me. almost like you said riding poetry. Well, <laughs> mate. <laughs> riding poultry. <laughs> <laughs> you love me too. chicken. You know, I want to say something right now. Oh, okay. you are. Is it about more poultry? No, no. I'm gonna. I say it's this. This beginning of this awkward podcast is kind of uh, st- st- not stunted. It feels awkward. It's been so long. Well, it like has for been. me, like, for me, it has been a long time. Because- like I just felt like I really got in the groove of my poultry joke just then. <laughs> Like, we're getting back on the chicken, so to speak, as far as podcasting excellence. You've been gone for so long. I've been just talking myself I and know. to other people. That's all you do. And then... <laughs> just talk. And it's just... What is the... what? Are, it's not jaunty. Like, stunted, stumped. Like, just herky-jerky. Not smooth. There's a word. Something? Spastic. We'll go with spastic. That's not the word I'm thinking of, but the next three should be really good. I anticipate it because I... You need some more. It's uh, right up there. Hand me some of that Japanese whiskey behind your head there, Enrique. All right. We've got to light this light but, this podcast. Yeah, we, uh, I mentioned the Patreon with Brandon. I didn't know that it was available to even access. I thought you like had to go push a button or something. So after what well, you do, I accidentally pushed the button. Oh, okay. So at this point, we're, we're I guess we'll post it on our Facebook, uh, Instagram, wherever Patreon. I guess just search Patreon. You can search Board Game Snobs. We pop up. There we are. Thank you kindly for your donations. Wherever your favorite Patreons are found, uh, Richard Payne. Now I I know I don't know Richard Payne. But I know him. He's a Facebook person that mm-hmm. I recognize because I like his photo. He's that guy that he, always is writing stuff. He's that guy. He sent us an email. He says, I have a few suggestions for the tiered monthly content for Patreon, which we don't have any content as of yet. It's just we're taking your money. And the content is, you're listening to it right now. I'm buying t- this is it. tons of Bitcoin with it. <laughs> 
And as soon as it takes back it, off, about to say, it's, you can probably get it pretty cheap. When it takes off, I am going to I blow up and act like I don't know. I nobody. think now is Ethereum. That's when we need to get on Ethereum. That's, uh, no, it's it was Dogecoin. Oh, Doge. I'm all. Coin. I'm telling you right now. I'm all in on XRP. We're there about you it. Go. Yep. Uh, he I don't know sa- what you're talking he about. He says none of them. Well, it's a bit. It's a chain block bit. Uh, chain block bit. Yeah, and it it crypt. It's an NFT. <laughs> chain block bit. Crypt. And it, you cannot fund it. You're being very cryptic right now. It's non fungible. Wow. Oh. None of them are board game related or board game adjacent, so they should fit into the show. Says Mr. Payne, Major Payne. Watch along with Gobby was one of his suggestions. Oh, Gobby with possible. Guest. What's this? Watches a movie and records commentary. Not necessarily MST. So I gotta like find a guy named Terry, and he's like just an ordinary guy. There's commentary. Uh, there he is. Mass- His last name's Smith or Jones, no doubt. Just gobby stream of consciousness with bad puns included, of course. Like, like that one there, commentary. So basically, you just watch a <laughs> Look, show and there's ramble. There's Terry Smith. I'm going to record him. That's commentary. Here's one thing I have found watching Gobby watch any type of movie is that he knows. All the B actors. Because Gobby doesn't watch television. He looks at his phone and looks up the actors <laughs> and see what else they were in. I'm and always so doing research. Every random actor that's been in two movies or three shows, he knows. He's like, I love her. She was in blah, blah, blah. I was like, nobody knows her. IMDb is my best but friend. He, IMDb's everything. So it was pro- it would probably be mindless. But you know, you should do that. Just have people randomly send in pilots of shows. You watch it and record it. Is that what he's saying? That's what he says for the monthly Patreon. I think you could do it. I might can. I, I could do. I could tune in with you. There you go. Uh, premiere finale. Jerry and Gobby watch the pilot episode of a long running series they're not familiar with. Discuss the show and where they think it will go. Then watch the series finale and then discuss the differences in characters, whether it might be a series worth watching, etc. That is a great idea. I am stealing that and acting like it's mine. <laughs> sounds like a po- that sounds like a podcast already in motion somewhere. And if it's not, it should be. The Freshman Mixer, Jerry Gobby, etc., do a taste test of the cheapest pre-mixed cocktails they can find. Done. Possibly oh, no. recreate some of the concoctions from their early drinking days. Hope this is helpful. My early drinking days consisted of Coors Light. That's now. And, uh, yeah. Or That's Richard true. Payne, occasionally referred to by Gobby on the show as, quote, who was that that posted that thing on Facebook? Oh, it doesn't matter. He called you out there. Tricky Dick Payne. Very nice. Jerry Huang. Is that how you pronounce that? I do not know. Huang. Huang. There's another Jerry. He's writing to you. Gabby. Hello, Jerry. I appreciate, I appreciate you and this podcast. I appreciate you. I grew up in Dallas, Texas after college, moved to Sacramento, and so enjoy hearing people talking Texan. All right. If you ever make it to Dice Tower Tech, Dice Tower West, or Kubla Khan? Kubla Khan. Never heard of it. That's the... He uh, was in Star Trek too. No, that's the Kubla Khan is the one that uh, isn't like... Brother of Noonien. Genghis Khan's third cousin, twice removed, I think. I would love to meet y'all in person. Yes, my real name is also Jerry. There are very few Jerry's left. Very few. Yeah, the fewer just, the better. Like a dying race. Very few. Very <laughs> a few. race of Jerry's. All Jerry's in theater and movies are pawn shop owners or men of receding hairlines. Like that's every pawn shop owner in every show is Jerry. You got Jerry Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. The only other significant Jerry I know of is off of Rick and Morty. There's also the Jerry, then Larry, then something else off of Parks and Rec. Gergich. Oh, Yeah. So, I mean, Jerry's yeah. a solid name. And all of those are bad examples. I mean, those are, yeah, they're kind of like loser types. World War II really <laughs> put the kibosh <laughs> on it Jerry. It did. It really did. Yeah. It, What's uh, a Jerry in World War II? Are you joking? Tell me. Did I? Did I? I didn't know. I was joking. Okay. So you don't know who the Jerry's were? Germans? Yes. Oh, okay. That was that, like, that was. I the, mean, I can put it together. Like, G-E-R. You literally didn't know that. I, I feel like I may have heard that before somewhere, but it's not <sighs> something that just popped into my brain. Your lack of his- historical facts are just, <laughs> just... Now, I can watch Pearl Harbor the movie and tell you all about it. That, they're not one Jerry in it. <laughs> I know. Because do you think the Germans attacked Pearl Harbor? <laughs> Did they not? With their U-571 boats with Bon Jovi. I doubt you're making me mad. That's I can't tell if did. you're joking. You are so eager they about did. something. Matthew McConaughey <laughs> and Bon Jovi attacked Pearl Harbor and their U-boat. I saw that movie. 
You can already see the steam just kind of coming off his head. It's very faint, but if you just look very closely. Enrique, Geriatric. Enrique, what have you been doing? Me? I like how you always ask this question. Because people like you, and you're the executive producer, and you're on the show less than oh, everybody. What, exactly what you do. Like, nothing. Yeah, it's just like work. Like mainly work. 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 No, you do other things. No, I don't. You do What do you do? What do you do when you're not working? I'm like laying in bed, playing games. It's like, yeah, like you. I like how you both know. Is that, that synonymous? Most... Is playing games you laying in bed? So you always lay in bed while playing games. He does. Yes. Like you guys make it sound like I'm an interesting person. Do you need a hobby? Basically, I would. I think you should get a hobby. We did this already, and you and people wrote in, and we and we tried to get you to do something, and you did nothing. Yes. We need to find you something, a skill that you can hone that will make you a productive member of society. All right, fine. Something of, I don't, what do you want to do? I don't know. Like Falconry. <laughs> you could be a falconer. <laughs> or, or raise chickens. Raise chickens. How Ooh, you raise then you chickens? can write them. Writing poetry. Or uh, you could do something. Why don't you... Uh, Anything. Any, Why don't you do something? Just, I'm just, I'm just not. You I know, feel like this is like you just exist. <laughs> you just exist, Enrique. We want you to live. I, I feel like I'm living. Okay. I think. You're, What'd you're, you do in Belize? Anything fun? No, it's just like it was just a nice little stay over at my uncle's place. What'd you do though? I there's not like. Uh, well, I guess we kind of just traveled around the the city and. Did a couple of things like we, what? Just like just sightsee. What, well, that's did, doing what, stuff. what did you see? I don't think he knows what doing things means. That's doing something like, like going to Belize. It's a foreign country, yeah, but like a tropical country, right? It's not really doing. It's just seeing. But like, that's <laughs> that's like, what most people like to do. I mean, I guess you can go out there and ride horses or swim in the ocean. Did you swim in the ocean? Uh, no. Uh, I did like like a kayaking thing with my. Oh, that's with my, a, I was saying you're uncle. doing stuff and you don't even know it. Yeah, you, but it you kayaked like, us. <laughs> it was. It wasn't like it was like in what river? A river. It was like a big lake. You kayaked in a lake. It's called the ocean, Enrique, or the, or the ocean, or something. It looked like I, a lake to me. Wait, I could see the. You, do you? <laughs> he can't see but twenty feet out, so no, everything's could, a lake. I could see another island from from where you saw an house. island. Or like like the the other side of the, of the mainland. You mainland. You were in the ocean. <laughs> Did you go in the ocean? He's sitting here kayaking the ocean. Did, let and me ask you this: When the water got in your mouth, did it taste salty? Did it taste like your I own never sweat? Went in. No, I but but you did did, did a whiff of something. Did it, it, it smell it, like there was like sand and all? But like it was in the ocean. You no doubt were in the ocean. It didn't look like an ocean to me. It looked like a giant lake. Did you I, happen to meet a person named Rolf? Rolf, no. No. Oh, okay. okay. Just as he would like it to be. So, what about? Okay. Um. What? Let so me ask you a series. He of doesn't questions. even know though. Like I said, did you do anything? No, I haven't done anything. Well, didn't you go to Belize? Yeah, but didn't do nothing. Come to find out, he kayaks the ocean and sightsees and is traveling to exotic foreign countries, but I, he doesn't for, consider for that me, doing like, anything. Like for me, kayaking is doing something. Tell it's the singing, listeners just, about your face it's, tattoo. <laughs> I'm joking. It's like face tattoo. Listen, <laughs> what? Like, so, do you, okay. I don't really think he even knows. Do you, you don't what have country any... is Belize in? Uh, somewhere in South America, but uh, like the con- the the country itself, I don't, I don't. Okay, know. Belize is the country. Which continent That's is a trick it on? Question. I don't approve of that. Oh, uh, Cortisone. No, cortisone. No, no, cortisone. No, no, no. It's on the cortisone. That's no. That... I think that's. I think that's the continent. The t- what continent? Continent. Yes. What continent is it on? Wouldn't it be like Brazil? Okay. So here, <laughs> I, 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 I'm. I am going no, to no. So here's what we're going to do. I'm not laughing. I'm not, I'm not laughing I'm not at laughing you. Either. I'm laughing with you. No, it's just, the, I'm, I'm. I'm not. The the public school system what, has failed you. Quick question: Which co- which continent is Brazil in? Incontinent. Incontinent? Continent? <laughs> is Brazil continent or incontinent? Like, if we're talking about the continent? Yes. It would be South America. Good. There we go. So, here we go. Okay. 
We are going to. So get... five seconds ago, you realized you said we said he, which yeah, continent, yeah, and you said it, Brazil. Well, like uh, that's fine. Okay, so you, you got there. You got there. We're there. I'm sorry. We're going to. We're geography. You don't have to apologize. We want you to take up geography. That might be fun. He's like, gonna, where in the world is Carmen study San Diego? Maps. Watch. Just watch that cartoon. Did you say Carmen San Diego. Yes, it's California. <laughs> okay. Well, well, no, okay. No, you, you, you said you're serious. Uh-huh. You're very serious. Hoisted by your own petard, Jerry. She's in California. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Let's do a little bit more of this. Carmen San Diego is a cartoon woman. Easy on the banging. Sorry. Sorry. And uh, she travels the oh. world running from oh, the cops Carmen or whoever. San Diego. Yes. I, I apologize. That's it, fine. So, no. We're, we are going to... Enroll you in a class of of geography and help you to learn about the world. Atlas I think that, making. I, at, yes, you could be a map maker. Maps a, go a as an opening. You cartography. Could, you yes. could learn a new language. Mm. You could learn sign language. Do you have a desire to do anything other than play video games? If there was a There's skill, some no. If there was a skill, he just wait said a no. minute. No. He just said no. No, 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 no. Here's like, a... like there is no desire of it. But if you like present it to me, I'll do it. Okay, I have. I, okay, here's the thing. I'm. You know how I am. I'm. I'm. I'm into everything. Yeah, I know. So when you think of something, like your business, tell him that, Enrique. That would have been a quality burn. <laughs> When you see stuff, okay. or perhaps things that you come across as you're playing your video games, yeah, Fortnite, yeah. whatever, is there something that you do in your video games that you think, I would like to learn that skill in real life that does not involve decapitation? Like, if you were talking about, like, something that has some type of realistic... A skill. Like... A talent. Yes. In the video games I play, there's there's no, nothing that's... Anything realistic like Yeah, that. what there is, like there's there's fencing. He's like fighting. using using the force or zombie killing. There's all types of stuff. Things that people do. If, if I was gonna do anything, it would be probably boxing. No, your pugilistic skills are way beyond no, because you die. You die so easily. You get punched in the kidneys one time and you ain't got about the one. Well, he didn't say necessarily an opponent, just just what is he gonna box? Exercising oh, the oh, bag. No, are you t- oh like that? Now he may not. Uh, he may. He, he may be thinking putting boxes together. <laughs> well, are you talking about cardboard? Or are you talking about actually punch, boxing? Are you talking boxing? about? Are you talking about packing things up? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. There's there's a thing you could you okay. could learn to throw a punch. So what would be the first thing you need to do to venture out on this endeavor? Um, for boxing, probably start just learning just jabbing. Yes, jabbing or something to do the strength in your hands because your hands are very small. Like if you punch somebody, you you, have very you small would probably hands. just poke them. Because I'm my current weight is what one eighty six, and if I your was, current weight, yeah, and so it probably be one eighty six, and if I remember cor- correctly, the prof- the professional ranking system for the for that weight class is a cruiser weight weight class. Are you are you are you going to try to get an MMA? What are you doing? What are we doing weight classes for all of a sudden? No, we're not having you join. <laughs> you're not. You, you're going from zero to sixty. You're son. not Holyfield. All right, I think we should probably drop the boxing thing. Is there another skill? Anything. Another skill? Uh, shooting, I guess. I've taken you shooting before, but then again, you have no eyesight. Zombie killing. I That's have no eyesight, but yet I was so far. He just names target. things to defend himself. I know he's very violent. So let's. Something. What about like painting? Like I would like to paint. I don't like painting. I, I've tried painting. I hate painting. Okay. I don't I like painting. Okay. Okay. Um, well, what about a book? Do you like reading? Like, I can read. Have you ever read a book? Yeah. <laughs> I can read. Uh, you read Jurassic Park. I read Jurassic Park. Yeah, I read Jurassic Park. I read a couple of Sherlock Holmes. You know, those. Do you enjoy yourself when you read? But that's not a skill. It, like, anyone. Uh, it could be. No, we're talking about a skill. <laughs> like, okay. we're talking about. Like, I thought a... we were talking more like hobbies, but a no, skill's skill. good. No, we won't skill. Like, we're talking about like a bodily, bodily function of where like, we can yes, actually. Yes, a bodily a function bo- <laughs> skill. <laughs> like, yes. anything. Uh, 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 yes. What skill? A next skill with the bodily functioning. I've oh, got it. Okay. I've got it. I've got it. Can you do this? Something I can do. It's a bodily I function. can teach you. It's something I can just. I don't want to mentor you because that would be awful. Pat him on. Okay. Uh, but it's something that you would love. Okay. It's something that would be useful 
and it's interesting, and you can do it anywhere, and it's only mildly illegal. Okay. Lock picking. There you go. Can a locksmith. You pick a lock. Can I, I've never done lock picking. But I can I, close I, my eyes. If your nose is a lock, you're a master. And just with my hands alone, a combination lock, unlock it. My eyes. I can teach you lock picking. All right. And you. What can, kind of lock did you say? The combination locks. Oh, really? Yeah. You I, can figure I, it out. I'm like the Italian job guy. I can do that. You put your ear to it. I'm Charlie Theron. Mm-hmm. I can do that. Okay. And I so can teach you. Anytime lock you need to okay. break into, you know, some locker rooms. You may need to be. You might be locked. A locker up. room locker. You may need to get with out a combination of lock on it for some reason. But there you go. But other locks, various locks, any locks. A safe. Yes. Like a safe. This could be something you could do. And perfect, and it's cool. You're just imagine you're driving your 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 scooter Be a cat burglar. down H Street, and you see some lady, and she's locked out of her car, and you're like, "I can help you, ma'am." And next thing you know, you're over there and you're unlocking her BMW. Okay, but that doesn't have that lo- style lock on it. I, yeah, but it, it doesn't like, matter. It, it varies. I'm just that... kind of man dream. <laughs> I mean, come on, I'm hey, trying to get put him... your ear up to the car door. But there's different types of, in variations of lock picking. I'm familiar with the various types of locks. So, just like in Skyrim, we're going to teach uh, you lock picking. Your like lock how, picking skills like are about to be a hundred percent. I like how you have to do the the game reference just to make it. I was. Seem more I am trying sensible something to me. relatable. Trying to relate. I am hip. So there you go. By the next time people see you. You will be able to commit mild misdemeanors utilizing various items to unlock bike locks. You could steal someone's bike. Well, you don't want to steal someone's bike. You know bike. how to dance? I don't like I gyrate. Move to and fro rhythmically. I don't think dancing is his thing. I love dancing. I know you do. I know we we know. I move to and fro rhythmically rhythm, quite well. Rhythm of the night. This is the rhythm of the night. The night. Whoa, whoa. Snap. I don't want... Oh, snap. Okay. So listen. We'll, we'll just, I got the power. We're going to leave that We're gonna leave that there for you. I like how we, it's getting kind of hectic. The, it's getting kind of hectic. Into the banter and then uh, intervention, and now we're getting into the board game. Uh, we are, because I wanted to tease this, because this is what professional podcast stars do. We played two games today, one of which we'll talk on our next episode to, to be mentioned later. I think probably one of the best Euros I have played in a long time time actually i'm very impressed with it uh we'll talk about it next episode this episode i concur we're going to talk about a game that i have very strong feelings about matter of fact i think my soapbox might be coming out on this one oh okay called circadians which is a, a insect right that's that little chirp yes chaos order which is a kickstarter that's just now getting fulfilled it's by old Mr. Old McDonald. McDonald. Had a farm. And did Shim and Sam help on this? It's Garfield Games. Sam and Zachary Smith are the designers. That's right. There you go. But Shim and Sham are. Sh- Sam did the art. Shim does Garfield Games. I don't know. I don't know. Shim did the art on this. I think. Really? Shim did the art on Circadians, First Light, which we thoroughly enjoyed. Wasn't that in your top 25? Your yes, top 20? Yes, yes, I love that game. Uh, I th- and I think I admitted that if I had played it more, I would have enjoyed it. And it, the solo in it, it probably would have been in my top the 25. The solo is excellent. The solo is excellent. Circadian's Chaos Order, unlike Circadian's First Light, which is a small box dice placement game, which is really good, and I like it despite hating dice placement games, Chaos Order is in the same psychedelic space realm of universe of Circadians, and it's a big box game. Uh, two to five players. Art, art and graphic design by Sam Phillips. Yes, I knew it was by Sam. You said Shim. No, I, 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 no, I said Sam. You, when you edit this, you'll realize I'm <laughs> um, Shim did the art on this. I think. Really? Shim did the art on Circadians, first line, which we... Development by Shim Phillips. I know Shim. I said Shim and Sham probably helped. Sam. Sam did the art because Sam did the art on, on Circadians. No, but you're getting there's a Sam Phillips who I did know. the art. Yes. Sam S J McDonald. Shim Phillips. No. 
Shim, Stop. Shim is the guy Stop. who runs Garfield. Sham <laughs> is the guy who does Ace lasagna. And McDonald is the guy designer with his buddy Zach. I understand these. Okay, people. I'm okay. Clear as mud. This is a big box game. It's two to four hours long. It's an area control game. It is kindly sent to us. Sam McDonald. Kindly sent to us. Reached, reached, reached out. out. The old reach out. I like a good reach out. <laughs> and asked, did we want this game? And we were like, I, I emailed back immediately. Yes. Even though I had no clue what it was about. And then quickly realized. I knew what it was. Quickly realized it was a Kickstarter that I completely missed out on. He sent us the game. Of course, I punched it. Watched several YouTube videos. Oh, Enrique, he punched it. By Sam. Boxing. Yes, that reference was timely. <laughs> that's what you should get. There you go. You could just punch all of our board games. There you go. That's that's what you could do. The practice your boxing. Your t- dainty fingers would be useful in poking oh. out the small bits. Sam. Thank you, Sam. Well, this game. I no, hang on. Soapbox coming out. Okay. I don't I don't wanna I don't I don't know if I let me let me defer this for a moment. Let me defer this for a moment. Okay. I'll let Enrique Enrique say something about this game. He needs to gather his thoughts. Okay, you say something about this game. Somebody say something about this game besides me. (laughs) Uh, This game is an area control game with the weird aliens from Circadians. I like it a lot. It's... It's... Okay. Some of the graphic design on the actual, like, the swamp, the cliffs, and the plains or whatever... You, you got them correct. Eh, they're not my favorite. Not my favorite. Like, we had a hard time discerning what the planes even were. I did. Because they had the sharp rocks on them. I did. It was plain as I'm day. used to. <laughs> I'm used to planes having, like, I'm used to the grass. Give me some wheat. But, but that's not even my point. This is it's an just alien that, world. I know, true. True. Planes can be just barren, spiky rocks, apparently. I didn't feel like they were distinguished enough. Like, I had a hard time discerning. The terrain? Yes, the terrain was I, not... I, it didn't pop. I think, it didn't pop. I think... Well, as a small criticism. Other than that, I really like this game. I like the order, like the action orders, order for this game. Because it doesn't do the, the whole traditional uh, action movement. Like, you do your movement, then your action, like, uh, research, building, and then, blah, 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 or combat. It it does it in a way of where you research first, you build first. <laughs> Which one do you do first? Research first or build first? He just said that. <laughs> he said you research first and you build first. Oh, well, you do them both first. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the, next, the second first, then the third okay. first. Let me rephrase then. It's in an you order, a specific first, order. Then then build, then you... Ooh, he can remember it. Then you harvest, then you move, then you recruit, and... You got this. Did you like the game? Yes, I, I loved the game. You loved it. Yes. You loved wow. it. Well, it because... here, okay, here's the thing. Soapbox out. I'm done here. This is what got me on this. Sam sent us this game. Very nice. I punched it. Looked at the rule book, watched several videos on it, got on BGG, saw that this was a Kickstarter just now being fulfilled, has a weight of four on BGG. You know, I don't really trust them. But quickly realized this game is quite heavy. The artwork is the same psychedelic LSD looking artwork that's from Circadians. I actually kind of like this artwork. I don't know why. It's weird. It's different. It's I different. Like it. I like it. It's it's very, very different. I really enjoy it. It's an area control game. And here's the thing. I absolutely, to my core, love area control. That is my jam. We rarely play area control because... There's not many good ones. There are, Oh, there's wonderful area okay. controls. There's lots there's, of good ones. There's tons of them. There's lots of good ones. I don't know why I said that. Because you're not thinking. I don't know why I said that. Because you're just... You're, so stupid. Because you're, you're out of the game. You're just barely a host. <laughs> Uh, and without me, this is what happens. Oh, yeah. No, actually, it's with you that this is no, happening. No, <laughs> you and Dan talked about vowel movements for 30 minutes. Oh, the Bristol stool chart. Enrique, look it up. Either you way. Pur- you might purchase one. You know what a stool is? I know what a stool is, but I feel like you're referring to something else. It's fine. Mm, I am. So. I'm being duplicitous. Chaos Order is, at its core, a fighting area control game. It's very Ameritrash. There's some theme to it, and each faction of the six factions have their own distinct 
way of winning. I always thought a married trash meant you could like be cast out of the game completely. No, I, no, really, no, never has. I've never heard. Does of it that. just mean fighting? Well, what's a married trash? Uh, what do you mean why, in this why, context? Why are you taking? Why are you derailing this <laughs> off to another topic? I, because I I think a married trash means one thing. Like you'd be cast out of the game. No, you're wrong. I'm telling you, wrong. Nobody thinks that. It's not what it means. How do you say nobody? Nope. I just did. I, you're right. Am nobody. I nobody? Yes. No, <laughs> how I'm dare you? You're not going to How dare no, you? No, Ameritrash <laughs> games are often more towards the theme than Euro games. Like, a Euro game will be certain mechanics, no interaction, not very mean, and and are very light on the theme. Where Ameritrash games tend to be very confrontational, very aggressive, and the theme is woven throughout the game, despite how the theme may even make the designer use some mechanics that aren't necessarily very smooth or eloquent, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in that case, Chaos Order is very much an Ameritrash game. And like I said, I love area control games. It's been a long time since we've played an area control game, an actual game that's just like, I grew up just playing Risk, just fighting, rolling mm-hmm. dice, moving guys around. I recently taught Jack how to play Star Wars Risk, had a ball, just blowing stuff up. Chaos Order is it's what it it harkens back to those old school area control games that are somewhat overly complicated sometimes that have a, a fair amount of rules but yet it brings about this feeling of I I don't I don't even know if it's if you it's don't have the words for it. it it's you're building this system and this system is not meant to give you victory points. It's not meant to run smoothly. You're you're it's meant to be this war machine that crushes your enemies and before you. And that's the feeling I get when I play this game. Everything about it is designed with a specific goal in mind. And so briefly let me just touch on the mechanisms of this game. Touch them. So, there is a order. Uh, the whole r- left side of the board is nothing but the turn order and the order for which the, the phases of the game. And the players take turns pricing these actions. So, for instance, typical actions such as research, which moves, make you, know, you can research the various other actions and make them more powerful. Or harvest, which is basically give you more resources, which you use to do the actions, and recruit, which gives you more guys to fight and move, and and so forth. These are all in order, and the players, the unique mechanic is, in turn order, they price one of these actions. Meaning, I put my little marker out here onto the recruit section of the board, and I get to do that action for free, and I put a price on it out of one of the little chits that I have. And everybody else who does that action this round has to pay me. I really like that. Because not only do you have to anticipate what your enemies are going to do, it's a good, easy way for you to get to do something for free, but also be able to price people out of an action or actually be able to bolster up your own economy. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. It's a little bit of a take that element. So, this... Because I put I put one out uh, one out there that required like a a bunch of energy and Enrique was unable to pay, so he couldn't take that action. Right. So it's all in order. You go down. The movement's very simple. It's all hexagon. The board is kind of modular as you put out these various hexagons to uh, kind of build it out because it kind of get the board gets smaller or bigger depending how many players. And out of the six factions on the board, there are six different victory tracks because each faction has their own way of scoring victory points this seems rather complicated but it's all written out in a very handy dandy little handout for each faction that tells not only how you should play with this faction but also what the other players can do to stomp you it gives tips on how to win and tips on how to beat each and every faction thought that was really cool and each little faction does something very well and is, of course, weak in some other areas. Thought that was super neat. The movement is pretty simple. Everything about this game seems to flow 
very nicely. Now, is it complicated? Yes. I had to watch several videos to kind of understand, but once you've played it one time, I'm pretty sure that the, the overall rules of this game I've got down. I'm not worried about it. I can pick this game up six months from now and remember how to play it. But the yeah. actual how to play with each faction, you would really have to play multiple times to understand how to use them efficiently. And each are so different. And I really, really like that. The combat in it is very similar to the same combat mechanism that you find inside with the little turn dial where you dial in how much strength you're going to use. But yet, in this game, it does something completely different. And the combat mechanism in this game, to me, is the game. That is the entirety of the game. It is so much, not just strategy, but fun, where you're dialing in your strength your attack value and your defense value and your strength determines who wins the area and then after the you've decided who actually has won the battle you calculate the attack and the defense and that is how much you inflict damage upon your opponent because whoever wins the area gets it and then the attack is how many of the men get wiped out basically or get injured and the defense is how much that you can negate. <clears throat> you use this using this dial secretively, the two players, and cards that you can attach to the dial that give you other bonuses. And each faction has their own little favorite part of the land that they can do battle, battle on or various little things that they do. I'm going to pause for a moment before I make a statement regarding what I think this game does better than... I don't even know. I like that the battle... While it is deterministic, once you set the dial and have a card, it does throw in an added element, if you so wish, if you have the ruby or whatever that red rock is, the gemstone, the righteous gemstone. You can pay that, and then you can add to your strength. So if you roll that die, then there's a little bit of uh, randomness in there that can change that it has the ability to change up the battle, and I like that a lot. I'm not a big fan of deterministic battling, I like the die rows, except I also I say that I also like the kind of battle that's like in uh, Twilight, not Imperial 2030 or whatever that is, where it's just like. You have four against my five. I win because I have one left over now. That's stupid because that is very deterministic as well. But I like that. Super simple. I like this battle a lot. And it is the the heart of the game because it's a uh, uh, area control. You have to fight for control. And it's got the same thing. You can pin people. And if there's all multiple factions, then the person with the first player marker or whatever it's called then chooses the order of who's going to fight whatever. Uh, it's it's a it's a fantastic battling area control game in that regard. So this game has many trappings similar to Scythe. And when the first time I punched this game and glanced at it, I, I noticed that this has a lot of the various. Not just with the, I guess, the hexagons, but the various players, the player board, and I guess the combat was all that was reminding me of it. This game is what I wanted Scythe to be. Mm -hmm. To me, people look at Scythe, they see the beautiful artwork and, and everything about it, their player boards and everything. And don't get me wrong, Chaos Order has a lot of stuff in it. It's not the same quality as Scythe by any means. No. But... In terms of the actual gameplay, Scythe is very basic. You have your player board, you move stuff around, same opening moves. The combat, there's no combat in Scythe. I don't know why people even act like there is. It's 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 very bland. This game is anything but bland. This is a combat, this is the combat Scythe should have had. This is, you're, you're fighting over these six relics on the board. And that uh, that's one way you can win if you have control of all six of those or you can run up your track that's asymmetrical to your uh, faction. But yeah, Scythe is straight up boring. So so this is this is my point. If you were to change the name of this game, the Scythe 2, done, redone the artwork, threw in some minis and gave it a double layer board, people would be blowing up, eating this game up alive. Because this game is far superior to Scythe. I do not know why people think Scythe is good. It is not. 
Is it is it a decent design? It yes. has. It it's has, that player board. That player board is everything inside of it. It's super nice and smooth and neat. But other than that, it's a bland game, like you it's, say. It's very bland. I see where people enjoy the the familiarity with it, the ease of it. I still own Scythe. I'm going to teach my kids to play it. I think it's a great entry-level game to the whole aspect of here's how to manage a board. Here's kind of like a little bit of air control. It's not that mean. Chaos Order is mean. You fight in it, and you have to fight in it. And it has that player board that, as you build buildings, a sides like and paladin style, as you build buildings, it starts giving you more for your income. So this is what I'm saying. Games like Scythe, people talk ad nauseum about. But something like Chaos Order will come out, people won't play it, they won't think about it, they won't see it, and they won't think anything in terms of its comparison. But I, I would love to talk to this Mr. McDonald and find out what inspired this, because he literally took various elements from other games, mashed them together, and said, I'm going to make... Into a superior game. Correct. This is... Okay, I'll do another one. Root. Everybody loves Another Root. one. Root is fine. I see why people like Root. I appreciate Root. I think it's, a, it's actually... In terms of its importance to board gaming, I see why. It, it's it's a very much one of those old school war games that's been rethemed and made more accessible, and it's actually a very good design. Everyone should take Root out for a whirl. Root, what I wanted from Root, and I think what kind of fell flat for me was the all the players having to kind of do their own thing but then keep an eye on somebody else to make sure they don't want to ray with it and then everybody attack the person in the lead in chaos order there is one universal goal which is these little relics that are all over the board you're trying to control them you're trying to get them and if you can control them all then you win but each round somebody captures one of them. And so there's only six of them. As you get down to the sixth round, it comes to a sudden death where you just have to get that sixth one. So everybody is fighting for this point on the board. That's the global victory in the game that everybody's going after. But you can also win the game by getting your own victory points, by doing your own thing. For instance, there's one faction that's all about just inflicting casualties upon everybody else, and that's how they get their victory points. There's another one where research, just researching and developing and getting these crystals is what gives them victory points. So you can win the game by doing your own little thing. And each one of these little factions has their own little standees and cinnaminis that are leaders that add little bonuses out to the armies or kind of act like generals that kind of add just a little bit of flavor to the game. And I think the asymmetry in this game, which we don't generally like, I don't like uh, games that make things unbalanced, but this I really enjoy. I, I, the, the asymmetry in this isn't extreme like Root is. You still right. have the same. You still you still play the game the same way. Just you might have a few little things different on your player board or the way you earn victory points. Not victory points. Run up your track. I guess they are victory points, uh, but. Thanks. Fame points, yes. I like the asymmetry because it's not so extreme. It fits in smoothly. What what is chaos order? What is that even? Is it just it's a paradoxical title? I don't understand what it means. You keep talking about the theme. I don't know what the theme is. Okay, well, circadians first light, where you're landing on a planet and you're trying to build up a base, like the humans, the circadians, trying to basically inhabit this alien world. This one is all the factions are there. Everybody has kind of come together and you're vying for power on this world. Yeah, but it acts like the like the planet itself is fighting back or something. And I don't know. I'm having a hard... I'm trying to no, read it, this while you're talking. You, well, I don't know why you're trying to read a thing that nobody Here's cares the thing. About. Circadian's First Light needs to be a bigger hit than it is. It probably won't because it... Just, I don't know. It just kind of flew under the radar and that's going to be the issue with this game because it's based on that circadian's chaos order clearly circadian's first light was enough of a hit to warrant putting circadians on here that was a for, sick, for recognition what's another no circadians is the world that it's in okay but either way so he's like yeah this is circadian part of the circadian's world if this had like you said if this had minis if it had the if 
but that's a I guess that's a dangerous edge to be on because it's like if you really bling out your game, it's super expensive. It does draw a, a, a people to eye it. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. something I'm interested in. But then also you can price people out. So I guess they're trying to no, but make this. No, they don't price people out. That's true. Not on Kickstarter. Price me out. These, no, you who spend more. How many sets yeah. of gold co- coins do you have? Like people just I only buy have coins. seventeen. People buy stuff 17. on Kickstarter. You're not going to price. I do. I on won't. I can't hardly purchase a game for more. I personally, I'm trying to think. Now that you said that, what's the most expensive game I've purchased? Probably freaking Tapestry for eighty bucks. But I know there's games out there for hundreds and hundreds, especially these all in boxes. Uh, you know, with everything thrown in, Everdell with everything thrown in. I'm getting off topic. Chaos Order, excellent game. Love it, love it, love it. It's a better scythe, Enrique. Like I love it. It's just it, like for, you love it still. Yeah, I, I love it still. Even though I had a rock, rocky start, you did. We all did. You literally started in the mountains. I I stomped y'all, and it was funny because of Gobby's. <laughs> I got so my, my, my so, mercenaries yes. kept leaving me. So first off, I love. I don't the the name of the game Chaos Order to me, actually describes the game very aptly because it is very chaotic, <laughs> but yet there's a very clear order to the game of what you're trying to do. Trying to take these points, do your thing. And I like that it with the depletion of them relics as the game goes on, it like drives you into this... What do they call that? What do they call that in a, in the military when you're trying to send people through like one by one so you can... Boom, 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 like, Kill zone? No, but funnel? Like, yeah, you funnel them through, but they call it something. Oh, yeah, like you have like one... It's like a choke something. Choke you point. have one team... Choke lead, point, yes. Like, like it's, this basically puts you through a choke point as the relics continue to leave so that everybody's headed right. towards the same spot. This game, to me, to describe it... So, just to recap quickly, if you like Scythe and you think, think Scythe is a good game and you're ready to play an actual adult game, because this game is very much two to four hours long. It's a very deep game. It's going to require some effort. And it's better probably with more players. So if you like Scythe, try this. If you like Root, try this. If you're the type and you have a group that's into bigger space themes games, such as Eclipse or Twilight Imperium, and you're looking for something that's along that same lines of Ameritrashy. And it's long. It, it, this game is long. This is a long game, and it requires effort. But games that require a lot of effort that I have to put in Two to four hours. A, lot of, a lot of concentration to learn it and teach it, and then try to learn learn the, the the factions, and then go. Okay, I'm ready to play this. If it doesn't give back what I put in, I'm frustrated. I watched four YouTube videos. I watched Sam play this game on Tabletop Simulator while I read the rule book, and went, "I'm going to like this. I can feel it in my bones. This is going to be good." And as soon as we sat down, started explaining it, started going over it. The first round, it clicked. Mm-hmm. And I go, I like, I want to play this. What? I want to play five hours of this with five players mm-hmm. that know this game. It says two to four. It's five hours long. I don't under, I don't know that I would want to play this at two player. Like it doesn't seem, does it shrink the map? Yes. So there, so like I said, it, I, I, from what I've seen from it and what I've heard a few people talk about. I prefer the it, interaction. I like the interaction people. of it. I like the asymmetry of it. This feels like one of those Criterion movies that nobody didn't come out in the movie theater that only comes out on DVD or at those film festivals that is really, really good, but nobody has, nobody's heard of it, nobody watches it. Mm -hmm. So Scythe is the blockbuster that everybody talks about, whereas this is is the adult movie... Not adult. That sounds like it's so, so, <laughs> Sam. Sam McDonald. My adult movie. Chaos. Sam McDonald and Castle. We make adult games. Adult games. No, it's it's a mature, thanky, very mature. difficult, difficult mm-hmm. area control game. I I I am really liking this. Adult in that there's a lot going on. It was like I said. It is not something that's easy to learn. But once you got it, you got it. And it's good. Lots of symbols. I, Lots of yes, symbols. And yes, the iconology is diff- difficult, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. 
I always don't know. Is it iconology or iconography? We've had this conversation. We actually. I think a, you say it wrong we every had time. An, I, we had an episode on this already. I think it's like episode 76. St- iconology is the study of visual imagery. Yes. And its symbolism. Icono- iconology. Iconography. Iconography. That's what I said. Iconography is the visual in- images and symbols used in a work of art. Yeah, so this is iconography. We're not studying it. I am. That's why I want. <laughs> We're using them. So anyways, Chaos Order is a great game. We need to have Sam or Shim and the other Sam on. And Zachary Smith. Don't forget Zach Smith. He's on here too. Okay, Zach Smith too. We have them all on. If I'm out again next week, just call Sam. We'll do. Or Shim. Is it Graffield or Garfield Games? Garfield, there's no D, it's not the cat. They're from New Zealand. They are. They're Kiwis. Good eye. No. You don't think they say they that? They don't say good day. What do they say? Good night. Hello there. <laughs> it like, more like, British. like Is that Obi Wan Kenobi? Obi Wan Kenobi. I don't think he's from New I Zealand. Did not he's from Tatooine. Like Obi Wan Kenobi. Very much. I watched it. Yeah, we know. I did not like it very much. Me neither. I really wanted to. Willy wanted to. Really Wonka wanted Willy Wonka to. Did. I really want Wonka to. Do. It didn't. It didn't. I did right. appreciate it. Like Enrique was in it though. Did you see him? He was the fake Jedi that looked just like you. <laughs> oh, bro, like they could have cast you. You could have been. Uh, that would have been the thing. You could have been fake what fake Jedi? Are you talking about? You're the guy that was faking like he was a Jedi and luring people. Haja? Yeah. I was saw. As soon as I saw that, I was like, that'd been a perfect Kumail role. Nanjiani? That'd have been a perfect role for Enrique, being like he's a fake Jedi. Waving stuff around, or you could have died in the temple. That would have been just your luck. You'd have been force sensitive, moving stuff around with your brain, and then they'd like come get you to train. And then, like, day one, you get your head cut off by Darth Vader. Oh, that's unfortunate. That would have been very unfortunate. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. All right. Would you have a green lightsaber or a blue lightsaber? Check out our Patreon well, on our Facebook you- group. I- I'd had a purple lightsaber. I'll have link in the show notes. Check out any of our social sites. We'll probably have our Patreon link because we need that money. Well, no. And if thank we... you so much to those that already did it. And if you can't afford to send us your money, don't. What you could do is simply just send us an email. Send us your gratitude. Send or us... refer to a friend that can give us money. If you, <laughs> a, yes. I refer a friend. If you have a friend who does not watch or listen to our show. But is flush with cash. Send them our way. <laughs> you tell them, hey, I got, why don't you Patreon Pretty some soon, friends of mine. We'll have a brand new laptop, and some they, sure SM7Bs. That's, that's a business. great idea. We need a sugar daddy. Exactly. So, I'm Gobby. If that's you. I, this is me. I'm Gobby. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still talking. Are we finishing? That's up? Jerry. I, I get- Thank you for tolerating this episode of the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Stay classy.